Hey everyone, I'm Mike Ferris and welcome to the Acrylic Asylum. In this video, I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step octopus and I just want to give a shout out to my friend Tiffany who asked me to do this piece as a request for a tutorial. So thank her for this wonderful piece down in the comments section below. And while you're at it, check out the description box for a list of colors and materials. So now let's jump in. So getting started now, I have an 8x10 pre-stretched canvas and I have some printer paper and cut to the size of my canvas and taped on with painter's tape. And I have 1 inch squares and I have numbers vertically and as well as horizontally. And I use this grid method on all my tutorials when I'm drawing something out that has a little bit more detail just because it's just easier for me and it takes me a while to draw without it. So go ahead and pause if you're following along and you can use this as a reference or do exactly what you see here. So flipping my picture over now, you can see I've laid it out and I used a stylus and black wax transfer paper and I did put a short video link that's about three minutes long in the description box on transferring images to your canvas. Do check that out if you need some more info on that. So I've got some phthalo blue, phthalo green, permanent black, this is light magenta, cad orange, burnt umber, and magenta red, and this is dioxine purple and over here of course is titanium white as always. So to get started with the background, this is gonna be a bokeh out of focus sort of background with colors that have fuzzy lines and I'll just go around pretty much the octopus with all these different valued colors. So I'm gonna start with phthalo blue and a touch of white here just to bring it up just a little bit. And I'll start with this and I'll start filling everything around the octopus on the left hand side for the most part and I'll even do the borders and have this picture complete all the way around. So no cleaning yet, I'm going to change the value now. I'm going to get some phthalo green down into that light blue color that I just made. And to that I'm going to add just a touch of this permanent black. This will just dull it down a little bit, a little bit more black than that actually. So I'm going to take this duller sort of army phthalo green color. And let's put that right here. You can put this wherever and you can really do the colors however you want. This is really about the octopus and having these colors down to allow this octopus to sort of pop off of this background so it's not too critical. So out here as you can see with less paint on the brush I just want to drag that over into the blue and it kind of fades it in like so. And there's fuzzy lines so this is what's going to give that out of focus sort of look to it. So without cleaning now I'm just going to take some permanent black and let's scratch in a few things like so. Okay, so on the right hand side taking that dark value and again on the borders where the color comes to the end of the canvas I'm gonna take it and wrap it all the way around so of course I'm not gonna do blue all the way around because this whole background is not blue so this is gonna add more interest and I think a pre-stretched canvas that has the picture that wraps around is a really good thing and it just makes it very interesting that way and so now I'm just taking that black here and I'm filling in this area I'm not really worried about going over my lines. As you can see, I spilled out a little bit. No big deal. It's not very critical because when we go to paint the octopus, it'll just knock that background color back. And anything you paint on top of something can be easily covered with acrylic paints, especially because they dry so fast. So I'm not going to go crazy, but I'm not going to be too careful either. <laughs> so it's all good. Just go for it and generally cover around each part. So. In this smaller area though, I will say I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush to make it easier for the paint to flow. So I can use just the tip of the brush like this. And I'm still using my big number 18 flat. And I've gotten comfortable with just using the edges and the tips of my brushes. 
If you want to use something smaller, go for it, like a number two flat brush, which I will be using at some point. So now I'm just going to take some more phthalo blue without cleaning. And over these black spots here, I just want to take that color over this. And by doing that, it will settle those down and make it more blurred out, giving it more of that bokeh out of focus look, as you can see. Okay, so I did clean my brush and now with a clean brush, I took some phthalo green and some titanium white. So this is a very vibrant phthalo green turquoise color. And let's go up here and just hit a couple of spots here and there with this brighter stuff. Okay, no cleaning yet, and I'm just gonna take some of this phthalo blue and white and go into this value. And I'll even take some of that green and white that I just made. And as you can see, this turquoise color now, it's a little bit more to the blue side. So however you wanna play these in, it's all good. Just change it up a little bit, have some darks, have some lights. And every time you load your brush and put paint down, I'll tell you, don't put a whole ton of paint down, but just a little bit at a time. It's just easier that way. So this is dioxine purple now and I'm gonna take. And I already have phthalo blue on my palette. So now what I wanna do is get this blue, which is ultramarine blue. So when you mix this and dioxine purple together, it makes this very nice royal lavender color. And you can choose however you want this to be, whether it be on the blue or more on the purple side. So in this case, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. And as you've seen, I got some titanium white there to bring it up. So let's take this royal value now and I wanna put that into the background a little bit and play this in. Okay, and so no cleaning yet. I'm gonna take some titanium white to that value I just was at and take some blue and some of this phthalo green and let's take this value now and scratch this in right here. Okay, let's take some of this cad orange, and I did clean my brush for this, and let's get a touch of this burnt umber together. So it's this brownish sort of warm brown color here, and let's put some of that in here as well. Okay, so no cleaning yet, and let's take some of this magenta red now and some white to that. And let's go over that same value that we just did and sort of scratch it in and not cover up all that other value that I just put down and letting that other one play in there as well. So cleaning my brush now, I've got phthalo blue and green now. Mix that up with a little bit of white and let's play that in right here. Okay, so on my palette now, I've got some cad yellow now. And to that, I wanna take a little bit of cad orange. And the yellow just really makes the orange a little bit more vibrant and more saturated and warms it up a bit. I think it brings it out just a little bit more. So let's take this value now and play him in. Okay, with a clean brush now, I'm gonna take some dioxine purple and to that, just a little bit of black to that mixed with the ultramarine blue. So with this darker value now, let's go and fill some of this around him. And we'll, again, we'll just play these values around and you can do this however you want. So don't worry if your colors don't look exactly like mine. I don't want anyone's painting to be exactly like mine because I want you guys to be free and have fun and to use the colors you have as long as you have your warms and your cool colors and your lights and your darks generally where they should go everything should work out just fine so what I did there was I took some dark value down and I put it on the sides here 
just picking up some permanent black. And before that, I took some magenta light. That's that pink stuff that you see there. And I just put a couple of little shapes there on the right side on the edge there. Again, this is your painting. You can put however you want. So now with a clean brush, and now I'm down to my number six flat brush now, as you can see. And I'm taking some of this light magenta and dioxine purple mixture. And I'm gonna start filling in the octopus now, and I'm gonna call the background good. And you can do the background to whatever degree you want and mess with it until you like it. So just gonna start blocking in the general colors and the values where they go, and I'm gonna start with this value here. Okay, without cleaning now, I'm gonna take this dioxine and some of this ultramarine blue, and I want it to the purple side. And I'm gonna block in and lay this value now, generally where it goes. So we're just basically in our blocking stages right now, and these colors that I'm putting down right now are not the final product, of course. I'm gonna adjust these colors along the way. I'm gonna add some lights and darks and I'm gonna go over some of these values and of course not cover all of it up, but let some of it show through and play with other values. So right now I'm just getting just the basic color that is generally where it goes. And again, with acrylics, the blocking stages always look rough and there's nothing really too cool or neat about it. But this is the mess that we need to build the texture and the dimension and the depth that we're gonna cover over with other values. So this is actually helpful for right now. This is preparing something very beautiful in the end. So. Now I'm going to take this light magenta without cleaning again and now some titanium white so you can see some of that purple still involved and that's fine because I want that in there. And let's block in with this value. Okay, with now cleaning now, I'm gonna take some permanent black. Let's go on the head and I'll block in with some of this dark value as well. So when you wanna put down paint, I always say put down your brush with your color where you want that color to be the most. And then as paint runs off the brush, you wanna take and blend that into those other colors, making it easier to do that when the paint does run off the brush. So now I'm just gonna go around the eye and a little bit over here and do some of these little outlines here on the tentacles. And this is now my number two flat brush that I'm using. And with the edge of it, I'm gonna do the eye here. This is the pupil right here. So just again, blocking in and filling these shapes in. So now with a clean brush, I'm gonna take some cad orange and cad yellow. And this is to make it more vibrant and warm it up. And let's take this orange now and block it in. And once again, without cleaning, now I'm gonna take some cad yellow and a little bit of white to this value. And let's put some highlight and a little bit of glow factor on his head right here. So just here and there. Again, not covering up all that orange and letting these values play together. All right, let's go for some of this magenta red now into that cat orange mixture. And let's put some of that right in here and we'll go over some of these values. And again, wherever you want the color to be the most is where you wanna put your paintbrush first. And then as color runs off the brush, 
bring that down into your blending area and that will make that very easy to happen and very natural looking. So just gonna blend some of this in and fill some more stuff in with this value. Okay, so I did clean my brush and I'm going back to that dioxine and that ultramarine blue and some titanium white and just a little bit of white just to bring it up. You want it sort of darker here. So we're gonna continue now with this value that I started up here and bring it down a little bit and just here and there and again putting these values generally where they go. Okay, no cleaning again and some more ultramarine blue and some black into that. Let's take this darker value now and let's put him in where he goes. So with most of all that black off, I'm going to take that dioxine and ultramarine color with no white this time. And so as you can see a little bit darker, let's go over right here. Okay, again, no cleaning and taking this light magenta color now. And let's run this one down. Okay, after that dioxine ultramarine mixture again, I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to take this magenta red and some raw umber mixture to it. And now I just want to take some of this light magenta and mix that in as well. So as you can see, these values, they change up and they add interest and depth. And these little changes is what's gonna really bring this out. So now I'm just gonna fill this in and bring it down. Okay, now going back to that dioxine and ultramarine and to that, just a little bit of light magenta. And again, that changes the value a little bit, a little bit more white to bring that up. And let's block in again with this value. Okay, with a clean brush now, just taking some phthalo blue this time instead of that ultramarine blue. And right here, just want to give this little blue sort of highlight shine right there. Okay, so with a clean brush, going back to my orange and a touch of this burnt umber and a little titanium white and a little bit of yellow now. And as you can see with more yellow and white, I'm going back over and adding some more of these golden highlights that are happening. Thank you. 
Okay, with a clean brush, I'm gonna take both the magentas, the red and the light magenta there, and let's take that mixture and block in down here. Okay, no cleaning again and taking both magentas again. And to that, let's add a little bit of dioxine purple to that this time. So as you can see, that changes the value a bit. Now let's take titanium white, that'll bring it up to make it more visible. And right here where I scratched in those darker purple values, let's go in between and fill in this tentacle arm with this value. So I just grabbed a little bit more magenta red there in that last part that you saw there. And so now I'm getting titanium white and more of this magenta red. And let's go right here and block in right here with that. Okay, no cleaning, just picking up more titanium white. As you can see, it's a little bit brighter there on that value that I just put down. It just makes it show up a little bit better. And just here and there on the bottom there, I'm just gonna scratch in a few little highlight stuff. And then right here with that same value, there's gonna be the separation for where his arms come out from underneath his body. And so that'll give that highlight lip right there. So just taking that dioxine and ultramarine and more of that light magenta mixture little bit of white in there so you can see it a little bit better and let's block in with that value there okay just a little streak there and now picking up more magenta red let's fill the rest of that in right here with this value Okay, let's go up and take some of this magenta red and some of this dioxine purple to that. Let's take this mixture now, I wanna go around the eye and let's fill that in right here. Okay, no cleaning, let's take some cat orange now and some titanium white and let's fill in the rest of the eyeball. And this will be around the pupil here. So I'm just using the edge of my number two flat brush. This is what's helping me get into these small areas. And again, you can use whatever brush you're comfortable with. Okay, just some titanium white and the edge of my number two flat brush. Let's give a little highlight here on the edge of the eyeball there. Okay, and so now let's pick up some of this cad orange and let's block in right here. Okay, no cleaning yet. I'm just gonna take some burnt umber now with my number two flat brush and on the edge of it, I'm just gonna tap some texture sort of actions like so. And this creates texture and adds some interest to the tentacle arm. So of course I'm not gonna cover up all that orange. So as you can see, this looks pretty messy still and we're still in the blocking stages more or less. And with acrylics, you really do need this mess and you need this abstract because on top of that, when you put your details and other layers on, this mess is gonna serve to bring out something very beautiful in the end and you so you really need this, believe it or not. So be patient, hang in there. This will just turn magically into something beautiful before you know it. It just like happens. It's one of my favorite things about acrylic painting is that you get to watch everything happen right before your eyes and literally watch a mess turn into something awesome. So let's take now some of this permanent black. And as you can see, I'm just going in places around the tentacles. And now I wanna go up here on the head and start the, the texture on there as well. So now with a clean brush, I've taken some of this dioxine and some of this light magenta and some titanium white, this very light lavender color. Let's go back up on the head 
and I don't want to cover up all that dark purple from before because again I want to let these values play together and here and there but not everywhere let's cover some of that up with this Alrighty, let's take some more of that magenta and some permanent black. And so it's mostly black, but I feel that if I put some of that light magenta in there, it'll help blend it in better. So just want to use the edge of my number two flat and just dab it here and there and create some texture. Okay, without cleaning, just going to take some pure magenta, light magenta that is, and let's go back over some of this black and settle some of that down and make it look more natural. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take that same value and use it for a highlight right here along this area and to scratch it in for another highlight right here as well. Alrighty, let's take some dioxine purple again and let's add some magenta red to that. And with this value, let's go and let's build the arm. This is where the tentacle is going to be curled up right here. And that value will serve for this right here. Okay, so with that same value, I'm just going to scratch it here and there in some places. So I try to stick to one value at a time and put it where I feel like it's going to go and before I change values. That way I'm not constantly switching back and forth and constantly cleaning my brush. If you clean a brush too much too often, it can at times start to wear out and then the bristles will start to fray out and so your crisp lines won't stay as crisp after a while. So it helps to preserve the brushes a little bit longer that way too because Acrylics will wear brushes out, believe it or not, so you will have to buy new brushes eventually the more you paint. But, you know, whatever, things wear out, and then you just renew them and change them, and it's all good. So you just want to prolong it as much as possible, though. So now with a clean brush, I'm going to take some yellow and a little bit of cat orange and some titanium white. As you can see, that's more yellow than orange. So we've made the yellow a little bit dulled down by the orange. And if I add more yellow to the orange, of course, it makes the orange a little bit more vibrant and saturated. So however you want to look at that and play that in. So basically taking this lighter, kind of more vibrant orange, and I'm going to dab it here and there. As you can see, I'm just leaving some of that dark and going back over it just a little bit with this value. Okay, no cleaning yet. I'm going to take some more yellow now and some titanium white to that. And these are going to be some golden highlights here on the head right here in this orange area. Let's just scratch in some of that and of course leave that orange and not cover all that up.
Okay, so to that light lavender color, some more titanium white, and let's dab that in here and there and fill in some of this area and build some more texture using the edge of my number two flat brush. And as you can see, I can use my finger to sort of settle that down a little bit and sort of help blend that in a bit. Okay, back to our dioxin ultra color there with a little bit less titanium white. As you can see, it's a little darker. Let's go back over some of that white and settle some of that down. And again, so you just play these colors back and forth and you can do this to any degree that you want and to you like what you see. So now I got some light magenta and again, titanium white to that. So let's take now this very light color. I wanna make this highlight reinforced and let's add another layer and bring it down and I'll bring it up into the tentacle arm and have it sort of disappear behind like so. Okay, let's take some cat orange now, a little bit of burnt umber to that. And this just warms up that brown a little bit more. And now some titanium white to that. And so we got this like peachy color now. And let's play this value in right here. Okay, taking some more of this burnt umber now without cleaning. I want to make this a little bit darker here. So I want to play this shadow color in right here between these folds here in his body. This is going to really help to pop out the dimension and some of the 3D effect on his body like so when I play these shadows and lights in there. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So I'm going to take this dioxin ultra color with some titanium white. I want to make a highlight with that same lavender color. And this is going to separate sort of the eye and the head away from the rest of the body that's kind of dropping down where you can see the change happening. So now going back to more yellow and orange, and I want to go and scratch that in right here and sort of brighten that up and make it more vibrant and saturated there. And now with a little bit more of that burnt umber, I scratched up over again. And so now more light magenta. And let's scratch over some of this with that. Okay, cleaning my brush and taking that background color of phthalo blue and some white. Let's put in a little bit of that right here. That just shows some of the background showing through. Okay, back to ultra and diox with some titanium white. Let's dab in with the edge of the number two flat brush, just here and there, right in this area. Okay, and so with just a teeny bit of this magenta red, I just barely scratched in some in the corner there that you saw. So I'm gonna pick up some more of that red and a little bit of dioxide is in there. So let's just put some of that right here. And red is a little bit more of a darker color, even though it is a warm color and it does dull other colors down. And I like to use red a lot of times in my shadowed areas. So in this case, underneath some of these tentacle arms, and in some other places, so just scratching it here and there. So now taking some light magenta and some white, and I did not clean my brush, and let's put a little striking highlight right here. Okay, switching it up, I have my script liner brush here, and with the script liner, you want lots of water on a script liner brush, so the paint runs like ink, so I'm gonna pull it through and turn it as I pull it through to a point, and right here, let's take this black, and I don't want to take it over all that faded black. As you can see, I've left some of that showing. So these different values and shades of black, again, those differences are really going to help build up depth and dimension and texture and all that even more. So as you can see, I'm just dabbing it randomly. And anything you don't like, you can just take a color and cover it up to any degree you want if you don't like something. So in the acrylic world, they dry so quick and it's super easy to just do that anytime you want. So just go for it. Don't worry about it. And again, you can fix it if you don't like something. So now I'm going to take some of this light magenta and some titanium white. And again, I have lots of water on this so that the paint runs like ink and I'm getting more water there. Turning the brush as I pull it through to a point. And this really helps with precision and really helps me get into these very small areas like this and show some of these sparkling highlights that are hitting some of these cracks and crevices. So as you can see, this is really building some nice texture to the skin now with all these different values playing. 
And this script liner brush, I'll tell you, really does the trick on putting these small details in like this. And now I just want to get more titanium white without cleaning. And I'm going to do this striking highlight on the edge of his forehead here. I almost said face or forehead face, right? Same thing, whatever. <laughs> so uh, it's an octopus, you know, it's kind of alien like it's like which part is which. Uh, so now I'm just going to sort of blend that into those other colors a little bit here. Just using really light pressure and dabbing it over kind of like so. So if you're not used to using the script liner brush or not comfortable because there is a lot of bristles and it does take a little bit more practice and control, you can definitely use a number two flat brush or something smaller for those smaller detailed areas if you want. So now I'm just going to get some more white and strike the edge of that edge there. And again, let's reinforce this little bit of a highlight on the eyeball there. And let's hit it on this side as well and make that shine just a little bit more. Alrighty, with that scrimp lighter now, let's get some of the magentas together, the light and the red, and some white. And I want more white this time because I want it lighter, and lots of water again, pulling it through to a point as I turn the brush. And this really helps to precision my line very well. And I'm using just the tip of the brush, I'm not pushing at all. If you push too hard with a scrimp liner brush, which is very easy to do, it will make a much fatter line than you want. And I'm going to tell you, go ahead and do it anyways, even if you do make a fat line, because like I said, you can just cover it up with the other color that you offended if you do, and just knock that right back. It's very easy to do, so practice, don't be too afraid, and just go for it. This is really good practice with the script liner. So now taking that yellow and white as you saw, and I want to strike this edge right here with some highlight right next to that dark shadow. This is going to really help to pop this dimension and his body out a little bit more this way. So let's hit this side with that as well. Okay, with a little bit left of that orange color there, let's just lightly scratch that over this and sort of bring that down a little bit into that other color there. Okay, some more orange. And let's go right here and let's make more of saturation and pop this out a little bit more by adding another layer. And that really helps to contrast against more of those other colors there. Okay, so with a clean brush now, let's take that diox and some white and let's go back up here and add some of that darker purple up here now and cover up some of that white but not all of it and same thing on this side and without cleaning now just taking more titanium white and let's go back in and go over some of that dark stuff but again not covering all of it up so as you can see i'm going back and forth here with lights and darks I'm blending them in, I'm settling them back, I'm coming back in with the other color and going back again over and basically just playing them back and forth until I like what I see and every time I do that it builds up more dimensions and more layers means more saturation, more volume and it makes it cleaner and again that abstract stuff underneath really helps to build this up even more as you can see all these different things playing together as we build it up more. So I'm just taking more titanium white to that darker value up there and playing some of that in and leaving some of that dark purple to show. Okay, and now some permanent black. And I went ahead and I'm just taking some of this shadow and dark crevice color here. I'm gonna go above the eye like so a little bit and really pop out this eye now. Okay, and with that light lavender color now, more titanium white to that with some light magenta involved. And again, lighter still, I wanna go and reinforce once again this bright highlight right here.
Okay, after dabbing some lighter values down below, now let's take some magenta, I'm sorry, light magenta, and some more titanium white. And let's do this highlight right here, and really helps to contrast against that crevice dark value that I put around the eye. And now right here, let's just sort of scratch over just a little bit of paint on the brush now. And you can still see all that texture I've built, and I have not covered that up, but I did make the highlight a little bit brighter, and it adds more dimension, makes the face or the forehead, whatever you want to call it, pop out a little bit more. Okay, so now more to the blue side. I added more of this Diox and Ultramarine blue color. Now I want to get Thalo blue involved in there. That adds value change just a little bit, but these little significant changes... I'm sorry, these little mundane details are significant, I should say. The more you do them, they add up and they just do a lot of things. So as you can see, the value is a little different there. I scratched in on the bottom tentacle there and also right here. So let's just play that in. And again, you can play these however. You don't have to have the same colors I'm using. It's just contrasting warm and cool colors together. And the layers that you build and the colors that you use, it will just work out, just hang in there and you'll see it's more or less like playing with picture filters but it will work with what you have so now taking permanent black and i want to use black now as a separator between tentacles and also to show shadows that are casting underneath them so now i'm going to take more magenta and magenta red and some white let's go down here and let's strike some of these areas with this value Okay, so let's build some texture here with just that dioxin ultra color there with the edge of my number two flat. I just want to scratch these little actions in. And this is kind of just blocking those in on this right here. I'm going to settle those back with some colors and make them look more natural. But this is going to add some interest and some texture as well on that. So now I'm just going to pick up some more white. And let's get a little bit of a highlight going on this. Rubbing it out with my finger just a little bit, which is fine. Okay, so some phthalo blue now and titanium white. This is that background color, and I just kind of want to strike that down here. Okay, putting my number two flat down now, going back to my script liner, I'm going to take this magenta light, some white, and this dioxine purple with it. Lots of water on my brush. And again, pulling that through as I turn the brush to a point. And that also helps to load it as well. And so now I'm just going to take the tip of it, and I want to start making these suction cups now. And I'm going to play with these a lot. So I'm going to just start to fill these in and more or less put these where they go. And we'll adjust them and... Like I said, add some shadow and some other stuff on them to make them look natural and more like it's part of the tentacle instead of these dots just like they're sitting on the tentacle, if that makes sense. So you can put these however. Um, I'm just kind of sort of in a way putting them in a pattern. I'm not totally just throwing them everywhere, but as you can see, I'm kind of staggering them. And now I want to put this little highlight at the back of the arm like so. So you can kind of put these however you want. There's no right or wrong, really. Like I said, you just kind of want to stagger them back and forth and do somewhat of a pattern in a way. And this is really going to start to show some details now on top of all the layers that we just did and really bring this out. So some more red and some more light magenta there and more white. So now I'm just hitting these down here. This is going to be more of a half moon shape as you get towards the edge here. And that shows just some of the dimension and just the way that his tentacle is turning. So just follow along and again, you can use this as a reference and do your own thing, which I highly encourage you to do because it really opens and expands your creativity a lot. And I'll be honest, when I do a picture, I do look at a reference photo, but I don't do exactly everything that's there. Sometimes I change it on purpose or I'll even do different colors 
because I find that I like something better than maybe what the picture's showing because it is a painting versus a photography picture. So that's something you want to decide and you over time get experience at and what you decide you want to do. So I just took some burnt umber there and some red and I went in between those tentacle sections that I put down and now I'm just getting permanent black and I want to go back in and darken those down just a little bit. Okay, with a little bit of paint left on the brush, let's scratch in some of this detail here. I'm going to write the letter H, as you can see, like that. This is going to be actually the start of some of this tentacle detail here. So I'm just going to take that out like so, and I'll mess around with that a little bit more. It'll make more sense in a minute here. So let's put that in, and now... Going back to my number two flat brush now, I'm gonna take ultramarine, I'm sorry, phthalo blue, now to this diox purple with some white. And a little bit more diox purple, I want it more of the purple showing up. Okay, a little bit more white. So let's take this color now. And I kinda wanna go in between some of the stuff that I just did and Kind of show a little bit of value change and the way that the light's hitting this tentacle arm here. And sort of play in something like that, okay? So now back to my script liner brush, and I did take light magenta and white. And right here, gonna play in some more of these suction cups. Alrighty, going back to my script liner brush now, I'm going to take some magenta red, some of that diox purple, and some of this burnt umber. So it's just a little bit of a darker maroon color here, and pulling it through with lots of water to a point with my script liner. I'm going to go around these suction cups here. So as you can see, this darker value now around those light areas, and you can see how those pop out, and it adds more dimension and texture, and it makes it look like it's more of like it's part of his arm, and by giving it that shadow. So now I'm gonna just go here and just kind of run that shadow color in there just a little bit like so, leaving some of that to play, or I'm sorry, some of that light color to play through a little bit. So that just builds up more details, more texture and all that. Okay, more water on my brush and some cat orange now and some titanium white pulling it through to a point once again and let's go down here and put some more of those suction cups. Okay, let's go into that diox color with some titanium white and a little bit of light magenta to that and grabbing more water, of course. And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna have to load the brush when you use a script liner with water constantly. And every time I go in with color, I always get water and I get more water and it's never ending because like I said, you always want water to be dripping off of the end of your brush for a script liner. Any other brush, you don't want as much water. So I'm just gonna hit some more of these cups here and work my way down on that. Ok, 
Okay, again, lots of water and let's turn our brush to a point as we pull through with that permanent black and let's create the outline of some more of these suction cups. Okay, and again, loading more water and black on my brush. And let's go around the stuff here that I did earlier. Okay, and so again, more titanium, I'm sorry, more water and going into magenta light with titanium white, pulling through a point and let's put some right here. Okay, let's load up some red and some light magenta, some diox, and some of this raw umber, I'm sorry, burnt umber. And again, that darker maroon color, let's go in between these guys. Okay, back to my number two flat brush now. I'm taking that diox and ultramarine color there and some titanium white. And just a little paint on the brush at a time. Like I said, you don't want to load too much. And especially in a small area like this, I just want to scratch in just a teeny bit of this value. I don't know if you can tell the difference there, but I'm sort of settling back some of that and making it more natural like that. So now more dioxine by itself. And let's get the edge of this defined like so. Okay, back to my script liner now. Lots of water again, both magentas with some titanium white and pulling that through as I turn the brush to a point. And let's go and make some more suction cups with this. Okay, so I just want to take some dark value now onto my script liner and I want to settle back some of these suction cups. I don't want them as bright since they are in a shadow area under his body like this. And so just going to kind of bring those shadows out a little bit. And down here I want to go in between these and make those pop out just a little bit more with this contrast against the dark and light. Okay, both magentas involved with some titanium white for our suction cup color again and again using just the tip of the script liner brush and on the edge right here I want to make these half circles that are on the edge of the tentacle arm and notice how I get just a little bit bigger as I come each way around in front and they get smaller as they get away from us up into the body a little bit more that shows more dimension and realism involved so just gonna take this lighter value around and I'm going to also use it to define some of the edges of the arm as some of the highlights striking it and showing some of the shape of it.
Okay, let's take a clean number two flat now and some magenta red and some of this burnt umber. Let's go and take just half of this half circle suction cup here. I'm just covering up some of it as you can see. It looks like now it makes it look like it's part of the tentacle arm instead of something just on his arm if that makes sense. So these values really help to play those in there and make them look more natural like that. So let's take now some of this lighter value now and again I just want to hit some of these highlights on some of these tentacles here and again this is my number two flat brush I'm using now and you can still use a script liner if you want I'm just like I said I'm just hitting what we've already done and I'm adding more titanium white to just brighten those up a little bit more okay so now with just permanent black I'm gonna come up here on this other side this upper part here and this is going to really help to contrast and pop these out of here. And again, this is that shadow area underneath. Like I said, we'll darken those down. So as I get down here, again, I want to take that black. And I really want to contrast that light against this dark and really pop out those tentacle arms. And it really helps to contrast and really draws the eye in. It makes it look more deep and more detailed this way. Okay, so just taking some more of that magenta light and some more titanium white and just here and there on this curled up tentacle arm here, I just kind of want to hit some highlights on it. Just sort of kiss it like so. And now let's kiss the forehead with some of that highlight again, that same color and around the eye a little bit. And again, this adds another layer and reinforces this highlight, making it pop just a little bit more. Okay, so with just the edge of my number two flat brush and titanium white, I don't want to hit every single tentacle suction cup because if I do, then I'll lose the effectiveness of some of the sparkling highlight that I want to put in there and some of the effect that's going to bring. This really helps to make it shine and sparkle and pops it out a little bit more. But again, if you do everything with something, then the effectiveness of that something really goes away. It's kind of like the saying, when everybody's super, nobody's super. So when everything is sparkly, nothing's sparkly. So you gotta have some dark and you gotta leave some of it alone so that it can contrast and you can have that comparison that draws the eye in in that way. Okay, so just gonna sparkle just some of these like I said and that were, that's where I get the motto here and there but not everywhere. Okay, so just permanent black now on the edge of my number, I'm sorry, the edge of my script liner brush. I'm just gonna hit a dot within the tentacle arms like that. That adds some final detail to this and it really brings out some more 
interest and realism that way. Okay, so with lots of water and script liner brush and titanium white, I'm gonna sign this piece now. And I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining me. And if you found this lesson enjoyable and helpful and inspirational, do hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell and notification so you don't miss any lessons I'll be putting out regularly. And again, I wanna give a shout out to my friend Tiffany. You made this possible because you picked this piece and thank you so much and I appreciate your request on this. So here you go, and everyone else, here you go. If anyone would like something painted, a subject matter, or anything that you would love to see the process and follow along, do leave a comment down below. And any questions you have, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, happy painting, everyone.